Hi guys, today we are going to discuss a very important concept of portfolio management. How to calculate your returns? What is the best metric to calculate your returns of the portfolio? And uh, how does it compare with the benchmark? Have you outperformed or underperformed the benchmark, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Well, there are various ways to calculate the returns. Some people just calculate a point to point, which is the absolute returns, and then there is a concept of CAGR, and then there is a finally a concept called XIRR. Now, depending upon how your investments are, what kind of investments you have done, you need to use the appropriate metric. So today, with a practical example, using the Excel, let me just tell you the difference between all the three kind of metrics and how do you actually calculate and which is the best metric for you to uh, calculate the actual returns of your portfolio. So just let me share my screen and, and show you how it is done. Well, so in this uh, sheet, what I have done is I have pulled out certain uh, NAVs for uh, for for excess mid cap, excess mid cap direct growth fund, and I have assumed that someone started investing from 23rd of March, which is 2020, which is the day where you know the Nifty closed at the bottom, and again it, from then it has just taken off and has rebounded. So assuming that someone invested 5,000 rupees on 23rd March, and then he decided that I'll do the SIP every fifth of the month. SIP of 5,000 rupees every fifth of the month. And then he gradually realizes in February uh, of 2021 that, okay, this market is just going up and up. Let me just increase my investment amount from 5,000 to 10,000 per month. And as I always say that you need to stagger your equity investments as much as possible, then I would say that, okay, let's do a 5,000 on fifth of every month and another 5,000 on 20th of every month. That is 15, every 15 days of 5,000 investment. So that's make it, that, that makes it 10,000. Uh, per month. So when you are investing 5,000 in that, in this Excel sheet, I am writing this amount as a negative value because it's an outflow. So first of all, we'll try to calculate the absolute returns and uh, the NAV on 23rd of March, 2020 is 32.91 and the NAV on 15th, uh, September to 2021, uh, which was, uh, which was yesterday is uh, 77.7. Now, if you want to calculate the absolute returns, the final value upon the initial value, of course, minus one because uh, of, of how you're calculating the percentage and it's 136%. But this 136% only takes into account point to point uh, returns of the, of, the, of the portfolio or of the mutual fund or your stock or anything it can be, right? So 136% have been made in one and a half years, almost one and a half years, not complete one and a half years from 23rd March to 15th of September. The next metric is to use a CAGR and CAGR actually standardizes your uh, rate of returns, assuming that it's for a period of one year, which is why we call it annual returns, right? Now, in order to calculate that, what we need to do is the point to point returns need to be standardized or you know need to be brought down or factored in by some kind of a time duration. And when I talk about time duration, the factor which I use, the formula which I use to calculate that time is called year frac. So let me just write it down, year frac for you. And what I try to do is I try to calculate the, what, what does year frac do? Year frac act, actually returns the year fraction representing the number of whole days between start date and end date. So if I just put in year frac and I put these two dates over here in this formula, 23rd March to 15th, uh, September, you see that we get something called 1.4778, which is like one year and 1.4778 years. So exactly not one and a half years, because obviously that will happen on 23rd September. Now I will use the same formula for CAGR uh, with a twist. So 77.70 divided by 32.91, but this needs to be made to the power of one divided by year frac which is which returns you 79%. So basically the formula for CAGR is equal to your ending value divided by your start value to the power of one divided by time period. So it, if it had been probably, you know, if it had been one year or uh, six months, then it would have been one upon 0 0.5, which is to the power two actually. So in the less, less than one year, the, the returns actually compound. And you can easily say that in six months you have made somewhere, let's say a 10%. So on an average yearly would be 20% because this is 
taking into account the exponential functions and it is compounded so it will be a little more than 20% but you get get the sense right so cagr is when we need to calculate point to point returns within a, a specified period so it needs only three data points your starting point ending point and the time duration but if you are doing an sip so i don't i don't see a sense that a cagr is is a very good metric why because for the first installment on 23rd march till 15th september 2021 this 79% would have made sense but what about this installment let's say 5th february from 58.68 to 77.0 its return would not be 79% right its return would be something less than that and similarly for 5th october similarly for other dates so when you are using this kind of a of a portfolio returns function when you need to calculate you need to use something called an xirr and what is xirr so first of all xirr is basically the kind of an average returns i'm not going into the technical uh, definition but this will whenever there are intermediate cash flows over a period of time this is the function what you will use and how to calculate it so what i have done over here is that whenever the investments have been made uh, 5000 rupees so it's all going to be negative because as i told you it's cash outflows and uh, i have put in uh, in nav from from you can put in from money control or value research online morning star anywhere and then finally i have calculated the units purchased now since this is negative i have just multiplied this by minus 1 because i need to have units purchased as a positive figure which is an obvious thing and then when i have made this sheet and i need to calculate this first of all what i'll do is i will total the sum of the units that i am currently holding which is 2449.88 and now because the nav on 15 september is 77.7 i will try to calculate the total portfolio value in excess mid cap which i have currently which is going to be the number of units multiplied by the current nav which comes out to be 190356 when i have these values what i just need to type in over here is xirr which is an inbuilt function in in excel i will type i will select all the values from uh, the first date to the to the current date and then i will put in the dates which is what xirr value the, the hint also gives us when i select these thing and then probably i'll put in a random figure as a as a guesstimate but it's not necessary that you put anything and i get returns as 71% now this 71% is my xirr which you cannot compare with cagr basically but if you compare you see that it is a lesser returns why it's a lesser returns because your some of the investments have gone as as recent as you know august or july or something because you have invested at a higher value over the period of the time that is why the returns are actually not matching so let's let's put in over here uh, cagr uh, xirr equals to 71% so this is how it looks now if you want to compare that how much your portfolio has you know performed vis a vis let's say the benchmark let's say nifty 50 uh, obviously the benchmark for excess mid cap would not be nifty 50 but just for the simplicity sake i have just taken some nifty values as on 23rd march and 15th september 2021 so it was 7610.25 and 17519.45 if you calculate the absolute returns for nifty over this period it will come out to be again same thing just like we did for the excess uh, navs which is coming out to be 100 Thirty percent. So ex- actually, absolute wise, uh, excess mid cap has outperformed Nifty. CAGR basis again the same thing. CAGR basis. What we'll do is this uh, on fifteen September divided by the starting value to the power of one upon the time period, which is the year frac minus one, which comes out to be seventy six percent, and it's obviously going to be a kind of a similar proportionally. It's going. To, it's going to be lesser. xirr i actually cannot calculate with this kind of data because for the xirr what i also need would be the nifty values as on these particular dates once i have that probably similarly i could have cal- calculated the xirr for nifty or a nifty mid cap whatever index or the benchmark you need to take and then you can put in that uh, percentage returns and then xirr can be easily computed but not like this and even in when you are doing this exercise at home and you know if you are putting in the nifty values you just don't put in the nifty values like that you just assume a 5000 rupees investment into you know kind of nifty index so at 7500 you put in a 5000 so it would be accordingly so so in place of nav the values would be your nifty index values just look at it how how it uh, uh, you know uh, it compares with with uh, with any kind of a fund you have so with this formula i would just like to say that whenever you are doing an sip in equity fund xir is the a uh, solution for you no cagr no absolute returns 
See, absolute returns is the easiest to calculate, right? Even in the Excel, it is just end value minus start value. But these are very, very wrong methods to calculate your returns. Always use XIRR whenever you are doing an SIP. So with that, uh, I hope uh, this would have helped you to learn something new. Thank you so much.